Have you ever looked up at a transmission tower and wondered, what's that lone wire hanging right at the top? It doesn't carry any visible power, it's not bundled with the other conductors, and yet it stands tall, guarding everything below it. That, my friend, is the unsung hero of the transmission line, the ground wire, also known as the shield wire. And today, we're going to explore not just what it is, but why it exists, how it functions, and what role it plays in the anatomy of a transmission system. When high voltage lines are stretched across hundreds of kilometers, suspended in air and exposed to the elements, the biggest threat they face isn't just mechanical failure, it's lightning. Yes, the single biggest enemy of overhead transmission systems is a sudden and violent discharge of atmospheric electricity. And here's where the ground wire comes into play. Placed at the very top of the tower, this wire isn't energized under normal conditions. It doesn't transmit power from one substation to another. Instead, it acts like a security guard shielding the power conductors below from lightning strokes. When lightning strikes, it's naturally attracted to the highest point, and in most cases, that point is the topmost ground wire. Once the lightning hits the ground wire, it gets safely conducted down through the tower's structure and into the earth, avoiding any direct contact with the actual power conductors. This simple yet brilliant concept dramatically reduces the risk of insulation failure, flashover and outages. You see, it's not just a passive metal strand waiting for a lightning bolt. It actually changes the electric field distribution around the transmission line. Without a ground wire, the phase conductors are fully exposed to the electric field in the atmosphere. But the presence of a grounded wire at the top alters the electrostatic field, reducing the possibility of upward leaders from the phase wires during a storm. Essentially, it lowers the chances of a lightning stroke hitting the power conductors by shielding them with its presence. And here's a fascinating point. The ground wire itself is grounded at regular intervals along the transmission line using earth mats or grounding rods at each tower. So even if a stroke hits somewhere mid-span, the current will still find a path to the earth quickly and safely. But there's more. In modern systems, engineers have taken this further. Let's talk about OPDW, optical ground wire. Instead of having a simple stranded steel or aluminum ground wire, today's lines often use a hybrid wire that not only provides grounding and lightning protection, but also houses optical fibers inside for high-speed communication. This is like giving the ground wire a second job. Lightning protection on the outside, data communication on the inside. Smart, right? Almost like the Clark Kent of conductors. Normal on the surface, but a full-blown superhero underneath. But now comes the question, can ground wire eliminate lightning outages entirely? Unfortunately, no. It significantly reduces them, especially direct strokes to phase conductors, but it cannot completely prevent back flashovers. These occur when lightning current flows down the tower and raises its potential so much that a flashover occurs from the tower to the conductor. However, with proper tower footing resistance, ground wire placement, and shielding angle, these problems can be minimized. Speaking of shielding angle, Here's an important design factor. The angle between the ground wire and the outermost phase conductor plays a crucial role. A smaller angle means better coverage but may require taller towers or wider structures. Designers usually go for a shielding angle of around 30 degrees to ensure all conductors lie within the protective zone of the ground wire. So, yes, even geometry plays a role in lightning protection. High voltage math meets mother nature. Now let's talk about the materials and construction of ground wires. Typically, these are made of galvanized steel, steel-reinforced aluminum, or aluminum-clad steel. Why? Because these materials offer the mechanical strength to withstand tension and wind, while also providing the conductivity needed to safely carry lightning current. And since they are at the topmost position, they also need to survive years of exposure to rain, sun, wind, and sometimes even snow or ice. No luxury life for this wire. It's got to be a true warrior. Before we move to the next segment, I'd love to hear from you all. Have you ever noticed that single top wire while looking at transmission lines? Let me know in the comments whether you knew its function before watching this video or if this concept was new to you. I genuinely read all your comments and love interacting with our electrifying community. All right, now let's switch gears and understand the difference between ground wire and neutral wire. A common confusion even among electrical students. A ground wire in transmission is for protection, 
while a neutral wire is part of the return path for current in distribution systems. The ground wire never carries load current under normal conditions. It's not part of the circuit that delivers power to homes or industries. Its job is solely protective. Neutral, on the other hand, is a return path and is often grounded at the distribution level for voltage stability. But they are not the same. Repeat it with me. Ground wire is not equal to neutral wire. You'd be surprised how often even engineers mix this up during Viva exams. And before we wrap this up, let's take a quick moment to appreciate how this one wire at the top, often overlooked, can be the difference between a stable system and a blown out line, between power continuity and a blackout. It's incredible how such a simple idea, implemented decades ago, continues to evolve and protect our grids today. If you found this explanation helpful, please do hit the like button, share this video with your friends who are studying or working in power systems, and don't forget to subscribe to Electrology, your go-to channel for all things electrifying. Also, I invite you to explore the thanks button right below this video. If this content helped you understand better or saved you from exam confusion, you can support the channel by clicking on it and sending your appreciation. Every bit of support counts and motivates us to bring you more such in-depth and high-quality content. And if you want to go one step further, check out the join button to become an official member of Electrology. You'll get exclusive badges, custom emojis, and early access to content and updates. Plus, you'll be supporting the team behind the scenes to keep creating and upgrading. So that's it for today's deep dive into the world of ground wire conception in transmission systems. The next time you look up at a transmission line, Give a little nod to the wire that silently guards our grid from the chaos of the skies. See you in the next video. Until then, stay curious and stay electrified.